Space games. We at Shellside have been there with TI3, TI4, and TI4 expansion. Oh, and Eclipse 2nd Edition 2, which we have yet to review. So, then how does something like this, Galactic Air Affair, another multi hour long space game about, you guessed it, being the best faction across the galaxy? It's gonna rhyme with TI4 and Eclipse. You'll explore and conquer planets, wage war or be at peace with fellow players, expand your technology tracks all to go after many sources of points. But then this has many different novel mechanics, from diceless combat in a fog of war system, to being able to switch your faction alignment from the light to the dark side. <laughs> this is a game of deterministic combat, Euro elements, all while having the crazy ramp up of invincible population and infinite movement at some point. Whew, yeah, so let's get into Galactic Era. Here's a quick how to play. By game end, we're all trying to get the most DP, destiny points. I don't like how DP rolls off the tongue, so we're just gonna call it victory points or VP from now on. Anyways, to get said points, you're gonna lead your faction across eight rounds to get the most points according to this galactic story that gives players many objectives, or to fulfill these domination cards you have in your hand. Or probably most importantly, place these population discs on the board on your planets, and that will give you points and game. Speaking of endgame, there's also something called a galactic goal, which is a massive payout of points. Here, this one means that for certain types of stars or planets we control in the middle, we get 10 points for each of them endgame. Or here, you get 8 points per space sector. These bigger hexes, if you have more ships than other player ships, they're combined endgame. That's a lot of ships. Now for the actual turn structure, this all may look really complicated, but the turn structure is not that bad. All you do on a round is two things. First, move all your ships. And then you take actions called growth actions. You pick two of these to use, and then do them. So as for moving, we can move any and however many ships we want. Here, there's a bunch of ships in the stack moving all at once, we'll explain more later. Then you fight any players you share a space with, and are at the war condition with. Highest value wins the fight, and the winner will choose how many ships of the loser to kill. Rest of ships retreat one space away. Then there's the growth actions, where players all pick two growth actions to do, then they all happen in turn order, ranging from colonizing a star, growing more population on their planets, building ships on their planets, or research a tech where they move up a tech field they selected this turn. Getting a tech just means that you slide your wooden marker one space to the right, and now you permanently have this ability. Or instead of going for tech, you could change your turn order. Oh, it's also possible to change your faction alignment, kind of like changing between good and evil. There's a good side called service to others, and the bad side called service to self. Uh, these are a little wordy, so we'll just refer to these as light and dark or light and shadow, or good and bad, you get the point. Anyways, if you're light, you can never declare war on others, but get bonuses when colonizing planets. If you're dark, you can declare war on any player. <laughs> and that's the bare bones of the game. We'll get into more about what these poker chips mean or how combat really works. But for now, all you need to know is that you move ships first on the map and then choose two of these growth actions to do. And you do eight of these rounds. After the eight rounds, you tally up points from all your multiple sources, like population on the board, or your galactic goal, to see you won the game. That's it. Let's get into the pros now. Pros time of Galactic Era, and now this is a big space game with a lot of components. So first, we gotta praise the visual and component stuff. Like, one of the best things is the iconography. For the most part, for all the dozens of icons here, they explain themselves well. Light half circle means good guy, dark half circle means bad guy. War, yep, that means war. Guy sitting cross-legged, yep, that's spirituality. Ships shooting into outer space, yep, that's propulsion. Genetics, yeah, can't get quite more clear than this. Speaking of technology, it's a key part of the game, and it's super easy to tell what levels other people are at during gameplay, with the wooden cubes and clear colors. Same goes for their population progression, so you can keep tabs on how many points your opponents get from that, make sure that's not too high, right? When you look at your own inset population board, 
It's super easy to know that you're at a certain quantity of points. And if you want more, then lift up what you grow next. Then you can easily tell how many ships you can build with your current population. Oh, and then the home planet and actual population markers are pretty neat. The population markers stack pretty well. Components for the most part feel pretty good, whether it be the multiple player aids, domination cards, star people tiles, and hey look, this game even came with a background book. Yep, this gets us right to Galactic Era's cool universe, where it's real. I mean, kind of, uh, depending on who you're at. Galactic Era is doing this thing where it takes all those alien conspiracy stories and theories you may have heard of and assuming them to be true. In the 1950s, the US government formed the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, the ICC, a covert space program that operates black projects of the military. Or how about the god you know as Ra? That's no god chicken, that's the sighting of these birds from space. Or their Skynet. Or this guy, I swear I saw this guy last night when I was driving home from work. Anyways, the conspiracy-friendly lore ties together with the actual story you're playing, where there's eras of light that merge into an era of darkness, and the rounds of the game are parts of the universe's lifespan. Let's talk about one of the huge selling points of this game, the Fog of War. This is really novel because it hides the quantity of ships of a fleet with these poker chips, where there could be one, two, four, five, all in a single stack. This adds a lot of fun uncertainty to the board state, where you're usually not quite too sure how many ships people have, or even so, their fleet type on top of it that modifies the entire ship stack, because that is also face down and hidden. You can have these fleets moving towards you, and you're not exactly sure how strong they are. There's even five dummy zero chips each player gets, meaning that you can definitely start throwing off opponents by stacking tons of different chips in, or just having a single fleet with one chip. But then that chip is a 10. Granted, this isn't complete random quantities that people can load in, since you always have to tell people what type of chips you're putting in when spawning them on the board. Or there's a technology called spirituality to peek at a couple of opponents' fleets around, as long as you're more spiritual than them. It's this really cool mix of partial knowledge, with endless permutations to stack a fleet that makes board states so, so curious. Players can engage in some sleight of hand with swapping fleet types on the same planet too at the beginning of turns. There's some fleet counterplay with the Soul A, the strongest fleet beating basically anything, except for the C counter soul that counters A if it goes against it. Or you can bait someone by putting out your E fleet, which can always run away immediately when attacked, and then have them waste their movement to attack them. You can frequently kind of guesstimate how much opponents have by recalling their previous moves, but in practice, you sometimes just don't have a clear idea of their precise strength, especially once you factor in their face down fleet types. This also has some fun political uses we'll get into later. This gets us to all the cool ways that Galactic Era handles combat. See, when attacking someone, the defender can always run away from you if they have higher spirituality or propulsion than you, but this is a little annoying until you realize that you can still take their planet when they run away from you. Then, when you actually do fight and win the fight, you can choose to kill any amount of the units. Any. So you can kill half of them if you want, or you can kill all of them, or you can kill none of them. Okay, so why would you not just kill all of them if you're their mortal enemy, right? Well, by killing their ships, you actually lose half of those ships you kill. And the way around that is to use the three to one method where you have to win the fight by a factor of three to one to not lose any ships when killing them. So then you can just kill all their ships. Three times the strength. Let's translate here. Three times the strength means him having three combat value, U9, or him 10, U30, or him 30 and U90. Yeah, it starts to get hard to do. Factor in these hidden fleet specialties that can modify combat strength, and getting that 3 to 1 in fights efficiently is quite hard, and then a huge swing when it happens, you kill everything. Most of the time, you killing stuff incurs penalties on you. Here, if you kill all four of his ships, then you lose half of that, you lose two. Or here, if you kill two things, you lose one ship. You have to account for how strong you want your fleet to be after this fight. Last pearl on combat, you're able to advance your combat capabilities even more by leveling up military tech. And when you do that, you can get fleet advancement tokens that can either double your fleet specialty effect or give you plus three victory points every time you win a fight with that fleet. 
Not only does this give you a great avenue in which to score points, but it also leads to even more mind games for combat, where if one of your fleet type's abilities are doubled, but then another one of your fleets is actually fighting, haha. The next gameplay pro is the other super novel thing about Galactic Era, the alignment system. That is, choosing to have your star people faction be a good guy or a bad guy. This changing is bonkers cool because choosing on what you want to be will change your capabilities in a very thematic way. So on a simple level, if you're good, you can never declare war on others, but you can still be at war if someone declares it on you. When colonizing as a good guy though, you can grab uninhabited places, no problem. Then you can ally with the advanced planets to literally just drop three population when you go on them. But then you can't touch the hostile neutral planets as a good guy. So then maybe you just go bad, the dark side, where not only can you colonize whatever the heck you want by exterminating its population, you can declare war on any player at almost any time, meaning that you can actually attack and conquer them. You're treating me badly? Huh, yeah, I'm just gonna declare war on you, attack, conquer, say bye bye to your population. Oh, but then wait a second, if you were good and happened to be at war with your opponent and managed to take their planet, it's called liberating, not conquering. So you replace their entire population with yours. <laughs> oh my God, that's so many more points, brilliant. Galactic Era has this really cool juxtaposition of light and dark, where being light is really good for liberating planets. Yes, I'm your savior, I get a bunch of points now, thank you. And while you can't be at war with other people, as the light side, you can't actually take the initiative and declare war yourself. Plus, let's say you're dark and at war with everyone else. Well, every time you switch sides, you immediately be at peace with everyone. So it's not like you can go from dark to light and still expect to be at war with everyone. Here's another wrinkle. Let's say you're at war with someone else and they decide to switch sides. Well, they're no longer at war with you and you can no longer be at war with them and you can't declare war on each other because you're both light and now you can't attack them anymore. There's more ways of spicing this up where the galactic story encourages players to switch alignments. As with rounds progressing, you can get points for being light every round or being dark every round, then points for being light every round again. Just one point a round isn't huge, but can matter. And also has the era of darkness, other goals typically line up with being more aggressive. So a lot of the table will switch the shadow side mid game. But then how about turn order? Galactic Era has a really cool method of changing the turn order. To prime you, turn order basically affects all gameplay. First it determines in which order you move ships and with moving ships attacking people. And then secondly, it affects the turn order in which you do your growth actions. To change the turn order during the growth phase, instead of choosing one of these to research, you can instead go up or down in order. This happens right away before doing the rest of the growth actions, which means it can interfere with how those are resolved. Okay, uh, to put this in simple video format, if you want to go faster in turn order or go up, then those happen in turn order fine. And then the people who wanna go slower in turn order or down, those people all go next, but this happens in reverse order, meaning that the bigger numbers go down first. Kind of messy to say this all out loud, but it works really well in gameplay, okay? This gives massive control over turn order, where you're guaranteed to go up or go down if you play the tokens. It also leads to massive swings of those turns. Say everyone plays move down except for one person. This resolves backwards, so then the person who was last gets rotated to first for a huge gameplay swing for them. They were last, now they're first. There's a big decision on even not to play a turn order marker, but rather to play around what turn order shenanigans you think your opponents will do. So then you choose your growth actions based off of that. Do you tell combat in Galactic Era is entirely deterministic, going first in a round will guarantee you give you the first strike on someone, especially good if you tech up at the end of the previous round and then go first the next round and attack them for the kill. But then what about going last? If you're last, it's generally better because then you can respond to everyone else. And okay, sure, maybe you lost a couple fights earlier, but if you have some surviving ships, those can go and counter attack everyone for the final say in a round. Final say is especially important in Galactic Era because the way to conquer someone's planet is through the growth phase, the next phase. So if you can counter attack them before they take your planets, then you're fine. 
Actually changing the order in which people do growth actions can be huge. Like say you increase your population now before they try to conquer your planet. So then now they don't have enough ships. Oops, that sucks for them. They just wasted an action. Or how about you conquer someone's planet after they research? So then now with that conquering planet loot, you get said research. This huge turn order shenanigan things makes a trade off between researching and prioritizing turn order really satisfying. You either get a permanent tech tier or literally change a turn order, which has severe effects on game plans, but might not necessarily give permanent benefits. We're already on some player interaction with turn order here. So let's just get to the next pro, the politics in Galactic Era. And it is really good. See, Galactic Era is a game where players are really interconnected with tons of movement possibilities. There's wormholes to move from sectors that are not connected to each other, and then also infinite amount of ways to split up your ships if you want to move them across the board, and then move them as far as your propulsion, which is at least three spaces. And then there's even ways to teleport population between planets if you want to relocate on the board for any reason. Do you know your populations on your planets that give you points? Yeah, those don't feel safe at all. Players are almost always in position to attack a handful of locations, if not more by splitting their fleets on turns, and it's up to you to convince them not to attack you. I mean, moving ships never cost you resources or anything like that in this game, so it's always very tempting to cause conflict if you think you can come out on top. You'll be forced to politic in this conflict-heavy game by negotiating peaceful trade deals. Here you'll meet other player ships on the map and give them a tech boost of one level, and they give you one boost in one of their techs. This is great at encouraging players to move across the map, inviting more conflict and interaction in general. And you'll find that you'll want to trade with multiple players, since only trading with one person has diminishing returns. Exciting thing about the middle sector too, it has these things called relics on planets that are super fun to squabble over. Not only does getting these early game mean bonkers as they plus one technology permanently, but there's also permanent relics that are tied to the planet and are so fun to use. Like there's a super stargate that lets you always teleport from it to any one of your stars or from any one of your stars. This is unblockable, meaning that even if someone is floating over it, you can port over your other ships to fight. Hello there. Or there's ancient pyramids that let you look at an extra fleet each turn. How's that for helping you win fights? Or a crazy planetary death ray that can destroy one ship or one population three spaces away from it every turn. <laughs> Combat outcomes also have political weight, where as a winner, you can choose how many ships you want to destroy. Do you decide for the loser to just keep all their ships as an act of mercy, but will you regret that decision if they just attack you later on the same turn? Or maybe they won't if they take their ships and attack one of your opponents. Like really, how much are you gonna anger them by just deleting one of their ships, right? Or maybe just two of them. It's, it's not a big deal, right? It's just two ships. We kept running into these types of dialogues. Hey, if you attack me, I won't be able to stop him from getting all the relics in the middle. Or, I don't see why you would attack me. It doesn't advance your win condition for me to lose points. Look at my measly population. Or, go attack his home base. Don't you need his tech? Yes, you get two tech from taking someone's home base. Look at how undefended he is. Attack him. Or, at war players can agree to be at peace with each other if they want, but it has to be mutual. So maybe more room for bickering and dealing there. It's pretty fun to become light then fight manipulative ways to have a shadow player declare war on you because then you can start conquering, I mean, uh, liberating their planets for tons of population for you. You declared war on me after I gave you that central planet you said you really needed. Remember how we talked about politics factoring into the fog of war too? You can look at someone's fleet to see their exact quantity and then you can sell that information to others. Or you could lie about it. Don't do that if you want to keep your friends. Or maybe you don't peek at it and you just say, I remember what it is when he was placing them down. And then you just throw out bogus numbers. Yeah, he's not that strong. He's like probably 0012, so you should attack him. And that's how you get people to attack your enemies in this game. Or pro strat, you exaggerate how strong your fleets are. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't attack me. I have like five, two fives, one ten in there, a bunch of fours in there. Don't do it, don't attack me. Hmm. Do you know what can be a problem in area control games? Turtling. That is, if it did exist in a galactic era, that would be never leaving your home sector. But it doesn't exist in a galactic era because there's all these victory point incentives scattered all around the board with a lot of movement possibilities, and also because of how growing your population works here. Each planet's growth capacity is limited to its nearest occupied star, so that 
Here, it's three spaces away, one, two, three. From that, it has a max of three population. Here, it's one space away and has a max of one population. This can get overrated occasionally, but encourages players to branch out across the map to grow as much as they can because that is points. As a cool possibility, you can take a planet between a bunch of planets an opponent is trying to grow, and that hurts their growing capacity, all without actually declaring war on them. And yep, that is an excellent way to get enemies to declare war on you if you're a light to line player. Then we're at war, right? And uh, we can finally go in and liberate their poor populations that just needed to be added to our empire. But then how's the technology in Galactic Era? This all present factor that we keep talking about, especially with propulsion letting you move infinitely. And here we have to report, the technology is great. Tech in Galactic Era is very well balanced around a rock, paper, scissors like race. Something like maxing out propulsion for infinite movement seems kind of broken until you realize that maxing out military will make your ships 10 times as strong. So infinite movement doesn't really matter too much if you're going against ships that are 10 times stronger than you. Or even a strong military might not matter if strong spirituality can just run away from you during fights. The timing of getting to use these tech abilities is timed really well too where if you're training with each other frequently, you'll be able to max out at least one of the tracks come about halfway through the game. This means you'll have plenty of time to exert its power, then play around how it pairs with maxing out another research track, that is, if you even want to keep teching up. Whichever tech you choose to prioritize, they all tie into making your military better, which matters for all the win conditions. But even when you're maxed out in something, you're gonna be threatened in another realm here. So the thing you're good at really matters and you gotta play around that. We're gonna talk about more of this tech in the progression pros of Galactic Era, where the progression is really something to behold with this tech. Like in the beginning of Galactic Era, things are pretty mellow. Maybe you're trying to colonize your home sector here. And then maybe you're trying to rush the middle for some relics. If you want to, they have pretty cool abilities and rushing the middle depends on the type of Galactic Goal you play with. But then during this whole time, the tech just keeps going up and up and up and up if you decide to research it. We already talked about propulsion uh, letting you go anywhere on the board and a little bit of military that can make four ships be 40 power instead of the starting four power. More high tier tech lets your spirituality out population ascend to the heavens, meaning that they don't lose you points when dying. What the heck? Yes, come kill my population to release them to the heavens. Or how about growth to get multiple population discs over each planet's capacity for six planets. Oh, but then text can also go above level six. You can get something good and then it resets back to six and then you can do it again later. For genetics, that will let you do another growth action on top of playing one normally. What a turn to clear row of population here. Look at that juicy 60 points. Oh, and then we can't forget about the domination cards that whenever you choose to fulfill yours, you get some VP out of nowhere to surge ahead. But in terms of progression, can also give you some sweet boosts on random turns for a tempo swing. Please, yes, let's just get more population with this. And there can definitely be some big reversals in late game, as people whip out these surprise domination cards that's immediate abilities can turn the tide of battle. So once you have all the domination cards memorized, that's certainly some mind gaming possibility. When we added up, Galactic Era has crazy swings late game, as epic space battles occur with souped up fleets with sometimes dozens of ships, and modifiers from advanced fleet tokens. Turn order really matters, as players try to get the right sequencing for their major assault, or defend their base properly until the end. And don't forget to max out fleets in each sector for 4 points per sector end game, which really ties up any loose ends of ships lying around and not doing anything end game. Oh, okay, so when we look at Galactic Era's gameplay, it just allows for so many different types of strategies because of all the differing ways to get points. You could go for crazy population growth of your own, or you could try to tear down other people's population and replace it with your own. Or you could try to win a bunch of fights with these fleet advancement tokens. Or you could prioritize Galactic Goals, or sometimes even the story really hard. Also, quick nod to how Galactic Era handles its limited emergent randomness. There's only two here. It's the exploring of new planets and then drawing your domination card. For the exploring, you always know that each home sector has two types of each neutral planet. And then whenever your ships are on a planet, you can just look at all the face down stuff, no problemo. So here we know that this is the poo colored one. And then if you're not on a planet, you can even use spirituality to peek at face down tokens. Huh. Useful. 
Then for your Domination Objective cards, sure, you only get dealt one of them, but you can choose not to do its requirement and just get points from the bottom instead. The points on it actually aren't that much either, if you decide to forego it altogether for other things. Plus, don't forget that you get another Domination card later in the game you can strategize around. Okay, so now we finally get to the asymmetry of Galactic Era with 17 different star tiles in the game. They mostly involve some type of specific setup and or a bonus and or restriction. Like there's these dogs who love to trade, but don't get them angry because then they can force trades. Or how about the felines that can force the attacker to retreat once when attacked, but then when they're a dark feline, force the defender to retreat once. Let's tie this pro's awesomeness together with the Yowies, which they start with spirituality level three. That means they can start trading with anyone regardless of distance if they just research spirituality once. And they can probably constantly peek at opponent's stuff with that spirituality lead. They have a drawback of never letting their robotics be higher than level one, so it's a little harder for them to build ships. Oh, but then with the tech rock, paper, scissors, maxing out spirituality lets you peek at an infinite amount of things. So you can use that knowledge is power freaking prescience to win as many fights as possible, even if your military isn't as strong. Really, you can just buy time for your max spirituality ascension engine to get going. Your Bigfoot people just become like angels. Doesn't matter if they die, they still give you points. Yeah, 17 of these different openings, stories, and strategies. This all goes into how this game has insane replayability. Like every game is not only different from the relics on the board, the different domination cards, and then the different double-sided nine sector tiles that you can choose A or B for, but then there's also the point sources of four galactic stories and 10 galactic goals you can mix and match with. How about this galactic goal where you get a lot of points for conquering and holding onto other people's bases until the end of the game. That's super bloody. Last pro, Galactic Era's gameplay meets this theme well for this epic space story it's trying to tell where light and dark coexist as mechanics in an area control. Like the fact that there's an actual difference between subjugating and liberating things is great. Or how population limits make a lot of sense when factoring in how nearby stars would reduce your planet's resources. Or even how your ships going into nebulas restricts their movement. And then late game, your population and then your tech is gonna explode, which really makes it feel like you're living out this entirety of a galactic era. Now we get to the cons of this big game. So let's start with this rule book here. So, Okay, it works, but in this day and age, 2022, a game with this much complexity, with so many rules and things we just spent so long praising, yeah, a game like this really needs a two rule book approach, a brief how to play, and then also an appendix. It has a really limited amount of pictures and diagrams, leaving your imagination to visualize how pieces go together. So you have some loose visuals of how the board goes together here or when it says to take two star counters of each of the three types. Wait, what, what were the three types of star counters again? Domination cards? Uh, yeah, shuffle them into a deck. Wait, what were those again? Let me go back, what did they look like? You get the point, the setup constantly does this. The three player setup example is a huge saving grace here, but my gosh, it would have been so much better if this was in addition to a fully visualized setup. Like look at the rulebook for TI4. It talks about components during setup, and then it shows the components. Talks about the game board, and then shows the actual game board. Or in Galactic Era, uh, the comment example is just a bunch of text. We have big gripes with the example of how movement works, which is one of the biggest parts of the game, because it's literally just this tiny section. The rulebook is too streamlined for being a single rulebook, constantly asking you to jump to the back to define what special abilities are, like relics, technology, galactic goals, you get the point. It works, but there really is a big concern that you wouldn't know about, say, infinite movement, one of this game's key things, by just reading the rulebook like a normal person and not going through every single table entry at the back. So yeah, this big game, this not so good at teaching the game, and so we want this to be split into two, and at the very least, just made more comprehensive overall. And the player aids too. We like them for the most part, especially the combat one, which is pretty darn comprehensive, but these really need to explain what these growth action counters do. These are like half the game. All the player aids do is tell you to pick them at some point, and then it technically defines their symbols right here. But again, by just saying their name, it's not telling you what it actually means to play that action. 
Then the star population effects area here works, but doesn't necessarily explain its intentions well if you don't know what this stack means. Once you realize that this number is supposed to be population quantity, it makes sense. But you don't have any indicators for that except this title, which is pretty vague. These should have been relabeled as something like um, uh, star abilities with a certain population. It's, that's kind of wordy, but it's more clear. For the next con, we have to talk about the Fog of War system. So for all of its pros we talked about, in real life, it does start hitting some real physical irritations and speed bumps. So yeah, you're supposed to stack a bunch of poker chips to mind game your opponents. But then if you need to check how strong your fleet is for any reason, you need to take these all apart and then look at these secretly, count them up, and then put them back. And that can get really annoying. This gets to be very cumbersome come mid to late game, where you have multiple fleets and then have to keep checking them. This pizza table solution definitely helps you move fleets around without them falling apart, but it takes a little longer to remove the poker chips from them. Come near end game, it's pretty much inevitable that you splay poker chips all over the table to count them. These problems with the Fog of War are really just inherent with the system of putting these numbers into a vertical, secret column that's value always matters. It really does feel like something that would work seamlessly in a video game where you could hover your cursor over these secretive columns and go like, oh yeah, okay, that's four, four, zero, two, three. Now I know it's five chips, cool. But then right now you have to actually count them yourself if you want to know how strong it is. It doesn't help with visuals that these chips and pizza tables are black on a mostly black board too. There's some limitation to possible fixes because there's only so much you can do with physical components and this amount of bluffing complexity, but here's some solutions. You can make the Dollar Tree feeling poker chips better quality so that they stack better and don't fall as much and feel better in the hand. Or you could print the fleet types on the pizza table bottoms so you have less components and not have to worry about this fleet token ever falling over. If we could take out the disk system, there could be ship minis with a letter on the bottom, and then everyone has a bunch of dials with that letter on the back of them. Lastly, you could just make everything bigger so that counting stuff would be easier to manage. Oh yeah, that's the next con. That Galactic Era's board is actually too physically small. There's a lot of hexes here, but it's crammed onto a not so big board, which consistently hurts the game experience. Like, look at this planet, its name is already small, and easily gets overshadowed by just having stuff there, which is a shame because there's a lot of effort into making creative names and art for each. This really makes spaces feel generic, not like epic planets, and that hurts the theme. Speaking of spaces, these in-between areas are even smaller than anything else, constantly getting us confused about a slight nudge to fleets there. Oh, was it there? Or there? Oh no, my fleet was there. This all has the extra irritating result of having to make the ships small. It feels like a missed opportunity, as these have decent detail, but a lot of that detail is kind of lost because they're so small. Galactic Era's board pieces should have been at least 30% bigger, but you know what? Again with the Fog of War issues, we can see the physical limitations. See, while making the board bigger would help with board clarity and then the overall space immersion, it would make playing this game on remotely average tables really hard. The other crucial reason why we can see these sectors not being bigger is that if you made them bigger, well, they wouldn't be able to fit, they wouldn't really be able to fit inside this already big game box. This is currently a little bigger than Elder Chore, so pretty standard size, but once you start making this bigger, then it starts to be more of a coffin and that's pretty inconvenient. Like look how tight the box is. We have one fleet expansion and one pizza table expansion and it's all pretty snug in here. Oh, by the way, this insert doesn't do anything. What doesn't help is also all of this stuff. All of these extra components. You got cards, you got rule books, background books, star people tiles, and these are all off Deutsch, German components. You can see that with all the stuff also in the box, there was basically no chance that you can make these bigger and have it fit inside that box. For ideal components, Galactic Era would probably want to have one German copy and then one English copy, but we can see that this is a small and new publisher. So there's definitely logistical concerns there. Last cons, the blue color has a uh, violet population markers and violet ships. This makes seeing it next to actual purple on the map very confusing. Oh, and then some of the faction art being purely symbols instead of splash art is also jarring. And not sure what the heck is going on with this build ships icon, 
but at least the rest of the growth actions are clear. Now it's time for the nitpicks, starting with player count. So you want to play with at least four players, which is this map setup right here. Lower player counts are a little wonky because of how important politics are and how interconnected the map is. Like for example, if someone is really strong militarily and continually wins fights at a 3 to 1 ratio, they kill everything of their opponents in that fight, meaning that they can steamroll one to two other players quite easily in smaller groups. In general, the war system, and especially trading, is just not going to be as colorful with three people, and definitely not with two people. Kind of hard to trade when there's only one other person, or maybe if there's only two other people. We also have to bring up the one player, which totally works, but is not a replacement for the multiplayer Galactic Era experience. It does have some trading with the AI players, but the gameplay is just not as engaging. One player in a game where Fog of War is so important definitely feels weird where you don't use any dummy tokens, and you have one opponent just constantly trying to destroy you, but still moves randomly. The other opponent are some cool scientist dudes that just float around randomly, and you can trade with them if you feel like it. Oh, and then the war symbol red on red is hard to see. And then the peace symbol blue on blue is hard to see. Maybe if the war was a black skull, and then the peace was just a white peace symbol, that would work great. Now it's time for a recommender score on Galactic Era, where we critically evaluate the aforementioned pros and cons, as well as with the caveat of, is this even a good idea in the first place? And so, this is gonna get a 8 out of 10. It is great. Galactic Era's mechanics are, well, amazing. There's this super novel Fog of War system, plus flipping of faction alignment, all wrapped around plenty of area control ideas across space. The diceless combat is mechanically clean, with incredible amounts of decision making even after winning combat. And sure, it even kind of classifies as a 4x if you factor in how you have to explore new planets, even though we wouldn't say exploration is a big part of the game. And the big bonus to this all is that you can tune the game to your liking, due to the huge variance of galactic goals you can play the game towards. You can play more King of the Hill-esque, more passive, more mind gamey with doubling objective payouts. There's just so much content in this box, past the 17 double sided factions. Double sided. At some point when making this review, we decided the mechanics were so good that you could point to basically 90% of stuff in this rulebook and it's a pro. Yeah, let's go. Uh, asteroid systems lets you build an extra ship if you have a ship in asteroid system. That's a good idea to give players mini objectives on the map. Uh, let's go. Uh, yeah, emergency reserve. Yeah, that's a great idea because when you tie it with the tech incentives to take other people's home planets, the person who has their home planet taken doesn't get punished too much. Great designs here. There's even ways to temporarily lose victory points to get multiple actions around or research multiple things around. Our eyebrows really raised when we looked at the capping out of technology tracks, where it has some of the most bonkers capping out of tech we've seen in a game period. It definitely seems like the bonkers progression is from the game wanting to have infinite movement as a thing, then balancing the game around it, and does it balance well. Galactic Era's mechanics are actually 10 out of 10, lots of cool X factors here, but for what the game is, our overall recommendation couldn't ever be more than a 9 out of 10, at least without inventing some new way to do Fog of War. See, Galactic Era's complexity is firmly tied to stacking these multiple poker chips, swapping quantities around to confuse your opponents, and splitting their numbers. These are all things that serve the mechanics well, but are just hitting so many physical speed bumps, hurdles, and hills on a table. As for time length, which we haven't mentioned yet, it's going to be at least a printed time length of 3 hours with a group of 4. If your group is super meticulous with fleet movement and chip stacking, it can take longer, but that's up to your group's bluffing habits, politics, and how analysis paralysis prone everyone is with all the fleet movement. Solo is easily finishable in about an hour. This all makes this epic space game quite finishable in an evening, once your group gets familiar with all the novel mechanics. Here's a fun question, how does this compare to the other big space games, like Eclipse 2nd Edition, that we've played multiple times, but still haven't released a review on yet? Review is coming one day, don't worry guys. Or how does it compare to Shelfside's favorite? Twilight Imperium 4. Comparing these is a loaded question, but we can say five points of interest here. First, combat. The actual diceless combat resolution in Galactic Era is light speeds faster than TI4 or Eclipse. Sure, the actual management of your swaths of ships can be slower and more calculative, but the results after counting ships is instant. It's just pure math. Since there is no cost to ever moving ships in Galactic Era, you can definitely fight more especially during earlier phases of the game. Galactic Era only ever has one ship though, configured in five different fleet types where it's the quantity that's important. 
compared to TI4's unique upgradable ship types, including a flagship, and then there's Eclipse's highly customizable four ships. Two, Galactic Era's war and peace system puts clear parameters on being able to fight people, strictly preventing you from war, or also giving you a cool way to mechanically outmaneuver people even when political negotiations go sour. If you're at war with a good guy, well, you can just stop being at war by just becoming the good guys as well. Eclipse kind of has this with its trading partner thing and then punishments for backstabbing, but that can be broken as needed. TI4 has some political cards you can give out. Sometimes in Galactic Era, you just cannot fight someone even though you want to. 3. Politics Galactic Era's is a little more open-ended than TI4 and Eclipse, where Galactic Era doesn't have TI4's specific phase for grand politics or resources or political cards to exchange. It also doesn't have Eclipse's printed economic ongoing alliances. Rather, Galactic Era only has technology to trade tit for tat, and the rest of politics is convincing people how to move with the huge movement options as they teleport, split, and merge fleets to grab multifaceted point sources. And we need to stress that infinite movement is a game changer for politics. It's like certain players have ships everywhere on the board once they have infinite movement. Fourth difference, Galactic Era's emergent randomness is really low, where you always have an idea of what the ratio of places you can explore in each sector is, and the domination deck is quite small to predict what you'll draw. Eclipse 2nd Edition has a lot more opening randomness with the exploring new places from a stack of tiles, and then CI4 is filled with emergent randomness through the drawing of action, politics, and agenda cards. Then both these games have some more randomness in combat results, because dice. And then finally, 5. The point scoring. Galactic Era is filled with different combinations and growing population. TI4 can have a lot of crossover with this, yet ways to get points are mostly not revealed to you at the beginning, and then has you fulfill low point agendas to win the game, rather than Galactic Era's attempt to just get the highest score. Then Eclipse leans a lot more towards fighting to get your high score, where new methods of getting points don't really emerge throughout the game. That brings us to that for even this genre of these big space games that Galactic Era is really a heavies gamers game, or a gamers game. I mean, just like, look at all these symbols and tables in the game. Look at that. Is that intimidating to you? Maybe? This is actually pretty far from TI4's main focus on emergent politics. That encourages more of a casual mindset, and it's far from a replacement to Eclipse's ship modifications, an action system that costs you resources. Galactic Era has gameplay that is worthy of the spaceship fighting pantheon, with its own alignment altering, fog of war, and bonkers technology that will feel novel to many a board gamer. It's this unapologetic gamer's game, constrained by some rough physical limitations, that boasts an epic, decision-ladded space opera, featuring infinite movement range as an attainable thing. So, Channing Jones, this looks like it was a gigantic passion project for you, and we have to commend you for having all these ridiculous sounding elements of a game that actually all function together fantastically. And it says on the box that this box of Galactic Era is for Era 1. Era 1 right there. So we're pretty excited what comes next for this system. In its current state though, if Galactic Era systems look like they're for you, and you're okay with some minor jank, please check it out. My personal score for Galactic Era is gonna be a 9 out of 10. An excellent time for me. This game is absolutely nuts. You can do so much stupid shit on any given turn because of how absurd the tech progression gets once something's maxed out. Infinite movement has got to be one of my favorite things ever. Normally something like that would be kind of stupid in a game like this where people can be like, 20 something hexes away from each other and would kill my enjoyment of making positioning matter. However, Galactic Era absolutely nails its balance and execution when it comes to the tech because everything has really engaging counterplay to it. I love the feeling of being able to move anywhere I want and it doesn't feel busted because other people can tech into things like having absurd combat power or absurd population growth or being omniscient, you get the idea. Plus, there's no randomness in combat. Typically, I'm not the biggest fan of too much randomness or no randomness, but in the case of hidden information, especially to this degree of splitting up face down chips, it works really well. And then the whole dichotomy between being STS or STO is so goddamn cool. Not only does it feel super balanced, but it's also extremely thematic and is another really cool consideration to make when trying to gain the upper hand against other players by 
manipulating who's actually allowed to attack who. There's also just so much gameplay variety, not just in the scope of one game, but across multiple ones too, from all the permutations of different objectives combined with different factions and different tech upgrades. Some games are aggressive clusterfucks. Others, people are sitting back and developing while being opportunistic. The game also, I feel, does its pacing and progression at the perfect speed. There's always people doing dumb shit for points once you're past the first two rounds because of the galactic story tiles, alongside people's hidden objectives. It always feels like there's these major points of eventful nonsense happening right on time once people start maxing out a tech track and going hard on their domination cards. But yeah, as another one of those space games on hexes, Galactic Era definitely does it super well. The vibes are just immaculate because of how crazy everything gets, and also because of the super unique spirituality angle going on. So why isn't this game a 10 out of 10 for me? It's solely for one reason, fiddliness. In fact, the fiddliness is so bad that I even considered rating my personal enjoyment as an eight out of 10. But when I thought about it, I like the unique crazy crap so much that I'm honestly still willing to say it's a nine out of 10 because those highs are so high. The TODR to this is that I really don't like the implementation of the discs used to represent your hidden fleet power. Not only is it super fucking ugly to look at so it kills my space combat immersion, but it's also ridiculously clunky due to how many ships are gonna be out once you hit late game. Because currently we get into situations where it's a late game with four players Everyone has a handful of fleets with God knows how many discs are in them, and it becomes impossible to account for, move around, and peek under them at a reasonable gameplay pace. Cause oh my God, it's so easy to mix up whose fleets are whose because they're all the same color without the fleet power token on them. But seriously, screw the fleet power tokens. I wouldn't mind if you had to get them via tech or if they were just outright removed from the game in favor of more asymmetric faction combat abilities. Oh yeah, that's another slight preference thing because I want the factions to be more different from each other, but it's mostly what you tech into that ends up differentiating you from everyone else. Granted, the tech and different ways of getting points are already crazy enough to scratch that itch for me, so you know I don't mind too much. And in case you're wondering, since I'm sure this is on a lot of your minds, how does this compare to the de facto space game? Twilight Imperium 4. I think I'd put base game TI4 and Galactic Era on the same level of enjoyment for me, you know, with Eclipse Second Ed being slightly above both. And then TI4 with the prophecy of King's expansion above everything else. TI4 probably would have easily beaten Galactic Era if this was years ago, but at this point, base game has stagnated pretty hard for me, especially after having gotten to taste the POK expansion. Anyways, here's hoping we help signal boost Galactic Era, because this game definitely deserves more attention. My personal score for Galactic Era. Ah, okay. Ha, 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 ha. I just want to point something. It has got a lot of. Right, it's going to be a six out of ten. I have an above average time with it. Okay, oh man, does this game fire on so many cylinders? There is an insane amount of player interaction mid to late game, where the politics meets the combat and the tech systems really cleverly. The fact that I can move all of my ships any amount of spaces I want, or split them however I want, or swap around fleet types on the board how I want. It's kind of boggling how unrestricted the movement feels, especially compared to other ship games like TI4, which makes every single round feel ripe with possibility. Like, the decision to be light or dark is a complete mind transformation compared to most games. And when you throw in these nuanced active abilities like the felines who can use their ability once per round during combat, that makes you think about movement completely differently. Couple that with how growth actions at the end of turns really matter. And so there's very little downtime in most of the rounds of the game, where I'm always either politicking, managing ships, or setting my growth actions up and questioning turn order sequencing. Turn order sequencing in this game is mad fun. I can't remember the last game I played where I felt so much in control of turn order. Forcing peacefulness, adapting to the galactic story, while still accounting for your domination card, the list just keeps going on and on and how impressed I am with this game. Is so much of this game sweet. It's a highly replayable space opera that works really well at four players, a player account I get a lot of. There's then a cool possibility to lose points to get additional growth actions, which can land you at negative VP at some point. So that's kind of like Gaia Project. That's really fun to wrap your head around. Oh man, was I just buzzing over how smooth and smart Galactic Era's turn structure normally felt? And then even how you could liberate enemies as a mechanic. Because I love playing the good guys in these games, 
and liberating, really satisfying. But okay, the more I played Galactic Era and the better we got at it, the more disillusioned I was with it on being something I would frequently want to play. The first issue is gonna mirror our big complaint in the cons, was that of the Fog of War system. Like, man, I do not like continually stacking all the plastic pieces, it does not feel good to me. And at some point when combat started getting complex, it was really bogged down by it feeling like a needless addition problem for me, with counting chips again and again. So then it's like, yeah, I would want to play this game on a computer, but strangely, I like Galactic Era's politics so much in person. What a conundrum. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna help you guys take down Dan anyways. I don't know how. How? No, oh, yes, his army, his, his fleets. He can do I'm it. Not strong. <laughs> I'm not strong. Anyways, in its current state, Galactic Era just gets bogged down too hard by the chip counting. There's just all these numbers you have to count up, all these different fleets you need to account for, and for all these epic ramps up of technology and then all the objectives to come to fruition, players actually need to try to win. And by trying to win the game, you need to very carefully count. And then another big discovery I made, the tech progression is actually too bonkers for me. Okay, as said in the pros, it's definitely balanced and progresses well. But for my taste, the military getting to 10 times the strength for a ship or having robotics let you build ships anywhere on the board as long as you have one population, these are just too much of a leap for me. It's just jarring to see. Remember, this tech craziness has to be there because of infinite movement. And let's talk about the infinite movement. I do not like infinite movement in practice, using it or playing against it. Yes, it leads to literally infinite amounts of decision making on turns, and that is actually too much for me to handle when the game is already so complexity heavy with chip quantities and faction alignments. Again, I think infinite movement is a fantastic mechanic that is really worth its implementation here, but man, do I feel crushed once infinite movement hits late game. This actually starts to push back on the praise I was just giving Galactic Era, where I said there was a lot of fleet options, which was cool. But the sheer quantity of options that start to escalate as the game goes on with more ships and more movement starts to wear on me. I can't help but be reminded of the overwhelmingness I felt playing Atlantic Chase, which I also commended for its incredible decision space, but was brutal in practice. Like compare these very freeform feeling games to TI4, a game that uses command tokens for actions where fleets can typically move one or two spaces. Turn possibilities and politics feel a lot tired to me with those restrictions, where I can predict where I think people are gonna go more easily, turns don't take as long, and I'm not caught off guard by attacks or movement in general. Then to round it all out, I actually don't really like how Galactic Era looks. The factions look okay to me, the symbol ones are annoying to see, and a lot of the components are too small, or at best, passable. And if I compare this to, say, TI4, my favorite space game, TI4 has factions with rich backstories, dreadnoughts fighting over the solar system, and the named Mechatol Rex to really give a nice backbone to a lot of the conflict. Galactic Era doesn't have these more realistic feeling stakes or imaginable battles to me, but it does have a lot of really cool novel mechanics, and I do have to praise that it does discourage turtling. And getting to choose how many units to kill with the game's overall movement options, man, that is just like chef's kiss in game design. I can't help but endlessly praise, but it's not necessarily for my taste. As such, I would be totally fine playing Galactic Era again at four players, more than that would be way too much downtime and counterplay complexity for me. But man, do I especially get apprehensive about the poker chips and infinite movement that someone will research. And so this game has a lot of crossover with my personal taste of Food Chain Magnate. These are both games I love to think about, think their systems are amazing, and would really like to see them in more games. But in their current physical state, I would mostly want to play on the computer. And you know what? I got some friends outside of Daniel that actually really love this game. So I'm gonna be holding on to this and see what happens in the future. CJ Games sending us Galactic Era to not affect scoring. And also this video is brought to you by our patrons who helped us get this awesome new mic, which we'll be using in the rest of our reviews. So hopefully it sounds great. Hopefully this sounds great. It should sound pretty great. Anyways, we got all our patrons right here. The list is going over there. And I'll give it a couple more seconds, a couple more seconds. All right, and then now we got our Mad Lads of Cardboard. We got ZL, Jeff L, Peter Z, The Doctor, and then this guy right there. And then we also got our Mad Lady of Cardboard. We got Amy. 
Thank you guys so much. This was a massive review to make. So please uh, let me know what you think about all these systems. Whew, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. See you guys later. Bye-bye.